let's try and take an example that requires us to sketch a cubic function so you're gonna learn in this video how do you draw a cubic function you know this is a cubic function because the highest exponent of x is actually equal to 3 that you can see as you check the dividing equation right now um there are a lot of properties or features of this kind of a graph so if you look at it graphically it actually looks like this it might take a form such as this one so we're trying to check what are the different parts that you need to calculate for if you want to draw a cubic function so in the form of a shape it looks like this and it um at most cuts the x-axis at three points so it's going to cut x-axis at that point x1 there it's also going to cut x maybe there at x2 and it's also going to cut x at x3 at most it will have three x inter uh, x intercepts sometimes it cuts x only twice right and we'll look at an example that does that and also might happen to cut x only at one point so we'll actually discuss those examples when we get to that in addition this graph cuts y at one point so it's going to cut y at one point there that's where the y intercept is going to be right and in the last thing maybe that you might be interested in is the fact that this kind of a graph has two turning points so it's got a turning point here we need the coordinate of that turning point there it's got an x and a y coordinate at the turning point where it's turning and it's also going to have another turning point at the bottom there so it's got two turning points so it has a turning point here and there it cuts x three times and it cuts y at one point and lastly it has a point which is known as the point of inflection which is where it changes concavity from being concave down to being concave up so that point happens somewhere maybe in this context somewhere there in the middle that's where we might have what we call the point of inflection point of inflection that's where the graph changes from being concave up to being concave down that transition there happens at the point of inflection so in order for you to draw this graph you will need to find all those features of this graph and then you can be able to succeed to sketch it so let's begin first of all with the easy stuff so the y-intercept how do you find the inter y intercept of any graph so for y-intercept right for y-intercept we always always put x as zero so i'm going to say let x be equal to zero because anywhere on the y-axis the x value is zero so for y-intercept um let x be zero so when i make this zero and make this zero and make this zero all these terms are going to disappear the only surviving term is going to be 12 so which means my y-intercept the coordinates of the y-intercept are going to be 0 and 12 so those will be the coordinates of the y-intercept so this is where the graph is going to pass on the y-axis now after that i'm now looking for the x-intercept but before i can find the x-intercept i'm going to need to factorize this cubic that you're looking at here so you can apply any of the concepts we have discussed up to so far of factorizing that cubic so in this case when i look at it i can see that i can probably apply grouping it's going to work for me so i'm going to say um f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x uh, plus 12 so i'm going to apply grouping and see how far that grouping is going to take me so you group the first two terms and then you group the last two terms in a different question you might need to apply a different technique of factorizing a cubic right so let's see in the first group you'll agree with me that x squared is common so we're going to take that out i'm going to have x squared into i have x here minus 3 remaining because this by that is x cubed this by that is minus 3x squared on the second group minus 4 is common so i'm factoring that out i'll have minus 4 into x minus 3 again remaining here because negative 4 times x is negative 4x and negative 4 times negative 3 will give us positive 12. So we know that grouping is going well so far because we are left with a bracket that looks exactly identical. So that means we can basically take that uh, out as a common factor. I'll have x minus 3 here. And if you factor out this part, you'll be left with x squared. So that x squared, I'm going to write it here. And out of this section here, if I take out that bracket as a common factor, I'll be left with minus 4. And then you will agree with me that now we've got the difference of two squares here. We can factorize this to x minus 3 into x minus 2 and x plus 2 as the factors of this x squared minus 4. So I've got 1, 2, 3 factors, which is what I expected because this is a cubic. Now from here, we can then say if f of x is this, 
we know that for x intercept we need to make y to be equal to zero so i'm going to say um zero is equal to x minus three into x minus two into x plus two and then from here we can then finish off and write our x as uh, x equals three or x equals two or x equals negative two that means our x intercepts can then in point form be written as follows therefore the x intercepts are going to be three is to zero the other one is going to be two is to zero and the last one is going to be minus two is to zero so those are the coordinates of where the graph is going to pass on the x-axis now i found my y-intercept i found my x-intercept so i'm happy with those the next thing to find is where the graph is going to turn we call those the turning points so let's find the turning points so for turning points you need to acknowledge the fact that at the point where the graph turns its gradient is zero because when a graph is increasing it has a positive gradient at the turning point its gradient is zero when it's decreasing the gradient is going to be negative so we want to find the coordinate at the turning point so think about it this way guys. if i might draw just a little drawing for you at this point here the gradient of the graph is zero because if you had to draw a tangent you'll get a straight line that is parallel to the x-axis so that's why we are going to try and find the derivative and equate the derivative to zero because the derivative symbolizes the gradient of the graph so at that point where the graph turns its gradient is zero so we're going to find the derivative and equate the derivative to zero so please keep that in mind very useful uh, concept that's where calculus comes in here because what i've done so far has nothing to do with calculus so the reason why this is basically used in calculus is because of the fact that we are going to find the derivative at a point so for turning points for turning points now for turning points let's see what would happen for turning points so for turning points i'm going to say this for turning points uh i'll start first of all with my f of x so my f of x is given to us as x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12 and then i'll find the first derivative the first derivative and then when you derive this using the power rule 3 times 1 gives you 3x to the power of 3 minus 1 gives you a 2 2 times 3 gives you minus 6x to the power of 2 minus 1 is 1 1 times minus 4 will give you minus 4 x to the power of 1 minus 1 is 0 so i'm gonna keep it only as minus 4 and the derivative of any constant is always equal to 0 now, once I'm done with my first derivative, this is the gradient of this graph. So I want to find the x values when the gradient is 0 because at the turning point, the derivative is actually equal to 0. So 0 is 3x squared minus 6x minus 4. Now, I need to solve for x in this. So using the quadratic formula, we know that using the quadratic formula, I can just say x equals to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And then you divide this by 2a your uh, b is negative 6 your a is going to be 3 your c is minus 4 and your a you're going to substitute it there as 3 as well right which means you're going to have negative of negative 6 plus minus the square root of negative 6 in brackets squared minus 4 times your a is 3 and your c is negative 4 right under the variable sign everything has to be divided by 2 times your a which is equal to 3 so when you punch this in your calculator you get the first x value coming out as negative um, 0 comma 53 or when you punch this out again uh, in your calculator for a different sign you're going to get an x value of 2 comma 53 so those are the two x values where the gradient of this graph is 0 which means those are the two x coordinates of the turning point that means my first turning point has an x value of negative 0, 0,53. But keep in mind that we don't know what is the corresponding y value. And then my second turning point, my second turning point has an x value of 2,53. It has an x value of 2,53. But once more, we don't know what is the corresponding y value. So we need to find what the corresponding y values are going to be. So if you have an x value and you want to know what's the corresponding y value on that graph, just simply take this and substitute everywhere where you see x. I'm going to sub this by here and put the same number here and there and try to figure out what the x, uh, the y value is going to be. So what I'm simply saying is we go and find f of 
negative 0 comma 53 by just substituting this in the original equation back to the original and when you sub this in the original and press in your calculator you're going to get an a value of exactly negative uh not negative yes it's going to be positive 13 comma 13. so that means when x is negative 0 comma 53 the corresponding y value is just going to become 13 comma 13. Now we do the same for the second x value there. When x is 2,53, we just take this 2,53, we sub in the original, substitute in the original. And then you press in your calculator, which means you are asking for f of that, f of 2,53 in your calculator. It comes out as exactly negative 1,13. Right, very powerful. So that means when x is 2,53, my corresponding y value will just simply be exactly negative 1 comma 1 3 right we are happy with that so i've got the coordinate of the turning point right now the last thing that we might want you to find is where the graph is going to change its concavity that is what we call the point of inflection where it changes from being concave up to being uh, concave down from being concave down to being concave up where it changes concavity right so let's see what will happen let's see what will happen so what i'm going to do here is for the point of inflection for the point of inflection, I'm just simply going to say we need to find the second derivative, the second derivative, not the first. So f of x is given by x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12. Now the first derivative of this is 3x squared minus 6x minus 4. And then the second derivative of this is this by this gives us 6x. The derivative of minus 6x is just minus 6. And when you derive minus 4, you get 0. So this is the second derivative. Now at the point of inflection, the second derivative is 0. So I'm going to put 0 equals 6x minus 6. And then we just solve for x. You get minus 6x is minus 6. And then you divide both sides by minus 6. Your x comes out as exactly 1. Now that means at the point of inflection, point of inflection, the x value is 1. Once more, I need the corresponding y value at the point of inflection. So every time you have x and you need the corresponding y value, just take that x and substitute in your f of x. So I'm going to ask for f of 1, which means when I put 1 here and 1 here and 1 here, you are going to end up with an answer of 6. So that means when x is 1, the corresponding y value has to be 6. So I've got my point of inflection. I have all the important parts that I need. I think I am now ready to draw this graph. So let's try and plot the graph here on this side. So I'm going to remove here and I'll create uh, my Cartesian plane or the sketch here. So here's my Cartesian plane here. Right, here's my Cartesian plane. I'm happy with that. It's not going to be drawn to scale. Okay, fine. So the x-intercept, we know that the graph is going to pass at 3, at 2 and at minus 2. So my graph is going to pass when x is minus 2. It's also going to pass when x is 2 and it's also going to pass when x is equal to 3. So those are my x-intercepts. My y-intercept, we found it as 0 and 12. So 0 and 12, I'm going to claim that 0 and 12 is somewhere there at the top. So this is where 12 is going to be. And the beautiful thing here is the turning point. So where are the turning points? Now the first turning point is when x is negative 0, 0,53 and y is 13.13. .13. So negative 0, 0,53 is on the left of the y-axis, which means it's somewhere here. So that's where it is. So this point there needs to correspond to 13.13. .13. So I'm going to use dotted lines to show you what is going to happen. So it's going to turn somewhere here at the top. So this is where the graph is going to turn, there at the top, where y is 13.13, .13, but x is negative 0, 0,53. Right. So, and then the other turning point is when x is 2,53. So, 2,53 is between 2 and 3. So, between 2 and 3, somewhere here in the middle. That's where the other turning point is going to be. So, that must correspond again to minus 1.13. So, minus 1.13. So, this is actually where the graph is going to turn again. So, those are my two turning points. Now, I've got all that I need. I can now join them to get my drawing, which is going to look like this. It's going to be in this form. You turning here. You cut here, you must cut through 12, you turn here, you come back to cut here, and then that is the sketch graph of the graph of f of x. And you might want to be nice to the examiner by showing the coordinates of the turning point explicitly. So